Right. So there's a lot of ground to cover, but I would hate myself if I didn't talk about the one that I'm here for the most first. Can we please talk about how you got the gig for Brain Scan? Woo! Yeah! <laughs> and talk about your experience working on that film. Um, well, it's been, it's been a long time, but, uh... Sure, yeah. Yeah. You were like, I was a kid, man. All right, yeah, to be perfectly, perfectly frank, um, when I saw the title of the script, I was like, wow, brain scan? Like, <laughs> and then I was reading, like, ooh, trickster? Like, you know, but actually, uh, as, uh, you know, like, uh, well, I shot it in Vancouver, and um, as time went on, man, like, I mean, it's amazing, like, how many, like, you know, fans there are of that movie. It's like, it's insane. Um, and, uh, yeah, when you look back, it was really ahead of its time and everything, so, yeah, you know. I feel like it's one of those movies that flew under a lot of people's radar, and for me, when I first saw it, it just truly captured Basically, my 90s bedroom as a kid. Your bedroom yeah. in that film. That was a cool bedroom. It was right? a cool bedroom. I was like, who the yeah. fuck is this kid? Where's he getting that shit? It's an amazing. And he doesn't thing. have any parents, right? You, right. I thought about that too. I was like, so uh, he just is emancipated, lives alone. Awesome. Um, T. Ryder Smith, who played the trickster, what was it like working with him? Because uh, that dude seems like a multifaceted, talented dude. Yeah, he's, he's very talented, man. He. Um, yeah, dude, he, he rocked that. I mean, I think he was, uh, had like a, you know, I don't remember, um, what's his name? Uh, yeah, like, I, there's a bunch of influences he had for that character. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, he's very kind of quiet, very, but very professional uh, kind of guy. Um, and, yeah, like I said, he's just very talented. Yeah. Um, the last thing I'll ask about Brain Scan for now, and then I'll leave it up to the audience later when we, when we get to them. Uh, I gotta know what it was like personally working with John Flynn and how he was as a director, because I'm a big Rolling Thunder fan, and John is no longer with us, but I never got to meet the man, so I was curious from, from you how it was working with John Flynn for Brain Scan. Oh, John. Um, he was one of those directors that made it very, very easy. You know, like he just um, pretty much knew what he wanted, but at the same time, like, you know, um, yeah, I mean, it's not like he was like, you know, kind of very like, uh, what do you call it, like uh, controlling or anything like that. He just was, uh, he was cool, man, he, he was cool. It's, it's funny, um, I, uh, one of my favorite, things that uh, I did with John. And, and and back in the day, like as a young actor, I kind of like freaked out. He's just got I... your water. Oh, dude, thank you. Thank you so much. The yeah. water hero, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for our sound guy, Harry Beam. Yeah! Water boy! Thank you. <laughs> oh. I'm not doing That's right. <laughs> Sorry, continue. Um, yeah, so, I mean, when I look back at uh, old films I do, I'm like, fuck, what did I do? What have I done? You know, like, um, but so it's like pretty much, you know, um, you know. So uh, I, I tended to uh, go really extreme with things. And I remember John uh, when we were shooting the scene where I like kind of destroy everything in my room. He's just like, you know, I I got to set and it's, you know, like, it's like one of the last days. And he's like, you know, I just want you to like go crazy and hit everything and like. Fuck yeah, dude, and, and yeah, I, mean, I had so much fun doing that scene. I don't know, and I, I made it an effort to like destroy as much shit as I sure. could. If you go, I'm getting like, paid to be here, and you want me to break <laughs> shit, yeah. clear the way. Yeah, yeah, it's like when I look back, though, I'm like, fuck, those poor props people, you know what I mean? Oh, like, sure. yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, thanks, man, we don't have another one of those, but that's cool. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it was great. Awesome. Um, well, let's talk about something that we all know is going to come up today regardless. I, I need to know the story of how you got involved with Terminator 2, man. That was a fucking <laughs> life-changing, <laughs> life-changing movie yeah. for you and for so many of us as fans. I will never forget seeing that film for the first time to this day. 
my favorite action movie of all time. It's yeah. that yes. and The Raid. They're like side by side. But turn that and what? The Raid. Have you seen that? No, I haven't oh, seen that. Oh, holy shit. Raid. That's a whole different kind of action movie. Terminator yeah. 2 is like action movie. The Raid is like, okay, I want to see some like Muay Thai and lots of stabbing and it's super violent. Sounds different. good. It's very good. <laughs> but yeah, man, how, how did you get involved with that? Because that must have just turned your world upside down. Um, I had sex with the casting director. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the Q&A, everybody. <laughs> um, no, um, I was, uh, basically, you know, I mean, I, I it's weird, the, the, the things we manifest in our life, you know, I, I yeah. always loved movies and loved, you know, just wanted to be in them and be an actor, and somehow, man, I was just randomly at a boys club in Pasadena, and, um, Mally Finn, uh, the casting director for Terminator, um, she just came up to me and asked me if I wanted to try out for a movie, and she wouldn't tell me what, so I just automatically small thought thing. it was kitty porn. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, I just went in, auditioned uh, several times, went up against a crap load of other kids, um, and then, uh, yeah, just landed the role, man. I mean, it was crazy. Went from like, you know, rags to riches pretty right. fast. How old were you at the time? I was 13. 13. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Be like, hey, no big deal, guys at school. Uh, I'm just like starring with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Robert Patrick and, oh, James Cameron's directing it. You know, don't <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a trip, dude. Like, uh, you know, as I get older, it becomes more and more of a trip, you know what I mean? The more and more I think about it, because it's like, yeah, it's like winning the lottery, man. Really? It's, it, it's, it's insane. It, I mean, most people would think, I would think as a kid that was crazy. Or sure. if I, you know, like for that for that to happen. But, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm majorly blessed, man. It's really cool. Absolutely. And, I, and what you just said, I, I totally agree with it. It's like winning the lottery, because I think all of us as fans, especially we go see movies, and... There, at least for me when I was a kid, if I saw something, I left the theater with this sense of, I can do that, I can fly, I can fight pirates, I can yes. do whatever, like you just get that childhood wonder going through your heart, and it's so amazing. You got to live the wonder at that time where that would have been pumping through me as a kid of, at 13 years old. So that's yeah, like a really insane. beautiful thing. I mean, when you're young and you, it happens, like, you know, I mean, when I was, when I was young, it, it, it definitely, um, you're just sort of like in shock, and it's like, you know you know what I mean? Like, I didn't realize, I guess during that time I was so busy, you never see the commercials for the movie or anything. It's just all happening. So, you know, like, you don't really realize, like, how big of an impact or anything it's having, you know? But, uh, yeah, it was cool. Yeah. I feel like I'm on Inside the Actor's Studio, and I'm James Lipton <laughs> yes. right now. Sorry. Because I'm going to just go through, no, it's, it's a pleasure. It's just I'm going to go through your filmography, so just deal with it. No. Um, no, let's talk about, um, this is a fucking, just such a great, fun movie, and I had to imagine that it was just a blast working with because it just breaks through the screen when you watch it. Let's talk about Detroit Rock City. Yeah. That movie is so fucking rock and roll, it's ridiculous. And uh, I talked about in my last panel how Dazed, uh, Dazed and Confused by Richard Linkletter, it gives you this sense of, Oh, these are my friends. I can watch this movie anytime and feel like I'm just, I get it. I'm part of it and it never gets old. I feel like Detroit Rock City had that kind of effect yes. on me. Yes. yes. You can fucking yes. do whatever yes. you want, man. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, yeah, let's see. Dude, um, yeah, Detroit Rock City for me, man, was, um, that was a blast. Like, yeah, I saw movies like Days of Confused and all that. I always wanted to do like a 70s stoner movie. like. Um, uh, and, uh, dude, I mean, working with fucking Kiss, man, it was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> I remember, I remember actually getting home with my friend Tim, and, I mean, this shows how old I am. I, I was playing, like, you know, my messages on the answering machine, and I was kind of walking around the house, and my friend Tim comes in, and he's like, Dude, Gene Simmons just called your phone, bro, and he just left a message. And I'm like, no way. And he's like, dude. And he like literally played it. And it's like, hey, this is Gene Simmons. And I was just like, holy shit. Oh, it's like, 
He's like, I want to, I want to invite you to my birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, what a like, fucking trip! Insane, man. it's insane, and uh, yeah, that was a no-brainer for me. You know, we got, we, we got to fly on the Kiss jet. We got oh, to go, oh my god! See, That's this is sad. why we're here to talk about this stuff because that ain't on the special features. I'll tell you that now. They don't talk about that. You were on the Kiss plane? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that like, it was dope, man. I mean, what do you think? I mean, we were like hanging out, like you know, um, yeah. We would have like dinner with that, like we had dinner with the whole band and everything. Um, and, you know, uh, Gene and Ace are my favorites personally. Mm, yeah, good but, people. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We've got to work with so many other amazing actors on that film. Uh, but I'm just really curious for you, uh, out of all the ones that you had to bounce off of, who was your favorite person that you got yeah, to work with on that movie? On just from an, act, yeah, from an acting perspective. Yeah. Um, <coughs> you're totally good. Um, you know what, me and Jimmy, me and Jimmy DiBello, we became good friends. He's actually here. Um, you know, I loved working with him, man. He's hilarious. He, yeah, yeah, he's hilarious. We, we became really good friends. He's still my friend. Um, you know, we had a really good time on that movie. Uh, Natasha, Natasha Leone, um, you know, dated her for a while. Yeah, but, uh, yeah man. <laughs> Let's she, talk about that. No. <laughs> um, yeah, she's a sweetheart. Um, and uh, yeah, man, just, uh, you know, Adam Rifkin was great. Yeah. Um, Tim Sultan, the producer. I mean, it was just a really fun shoot. Yeah, man, I have to imagine. It was just like a, a melting pot of talent and people excited to make that movie. You can just tell. It was a fun project. Um, before I go into a more serious direction, let's talk about another horror film. You were in the remake of Night of the Demons, which I genuinely like that remake. I know some people would disagree with me, and I'm personally friends with Adam Girosh, the director, and I can say right now, this is not me blowing him. I genuinely just like him. So, <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure you are. I know he's back there. He's like, come here, Graham. Like, ah. <laughs> See, he knows I just did the voice. Um, what, what was it like for you getting into Night of the Demons and, and jumping on something that had already instilled such a, um, a love from fans uh, from all the way back in the 80s, back when Kevin Tenney did it. And did you watch the film ahead of time to get in the spirit? Um, no, I didn't watch the film. He did. I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> no, watch, not at all. I didn't watch the movie. Um, Sometimes it's a choice. Like, yeah. you don't want to watch it because you don't want it to impact what you're going to do as well. Yeah, I'd like, I mean, yeah, I, I don't, you know. Um, actually, I had no idea how awesome like it would actually. I mean, Adam was great to work with. I I, I loved Adam, um, and uh, I should have watched the movie. I probably would usually. I you know uh, that was like I was in New Orleans, so let's just say like you know <clears throat> fun heavy yeah. drinking, yeah. <laughs> you know like pretty much, which is great if you're doing like a horror movie like that. Sure. But, um, yeah, dude, I. Uh, yeah, again, I had a really, really good time on that movie. Um, that was like my first time to NOLA, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I had a blast. I had a really to be fair, I would have done the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> that place looks like fun, and they don't have Mardi Gras there for no fucking reason, okay? You have no there. Uh, so let's, let's take this in a serious direction, and then I'll throw things over to the audience so that everybody else can uh, chime in. I really would love to talk to you about, to me, one of the greatest films that influenced me as a filmmaker and made me want to be a filmmaker, and your performance is just fucking outstanding. Uh, let's talk about American History X, if we can. Ooh, um, yes. Danny Vineyard, and you're working opposite Edward Norton, you're working with Ethan Suffley, you've got Tony Kay as your director. It's, it's a dream team, it's insane. But I heard that there was a lot of issues with Tony. I mean, I'm sure, as we all know, there's rumors surrounding things that we were never there for, regardless of what movie you're talking about. But American History X, uh, there was told that like Tony was kicked out of the editing room. There's all these things. But I just want to know personally what your experience was and how you got involved, because it's such a powerful movie. Super powerful. Yeah. Um, 
Um, yeah, when I, I mean, I love working with Tony. I think he's extremely talented. Um, you know, and uh, a lot of what, I mean, pretty much everything that you see is Tony. Um, when I, or, Tony's an odd man, <laughs> somewhat, like, sure. you know, I follow him on Instagram, it's weird. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when I first met him, like, I went to audition, I thought he hated me, you know what I mean? Like, I really did, but I ended up getting the movie, so, um, you know, uh, that was kind of like a precursor, but no, Tony was awesome. Um, you know, both, and Ed Norton was great to work with, man. I mean, he's very, very talented. Um, yeah, but they did sort of have like a little bit of a falling out over the editing of the movie. Um, I stayed out of the whole thing, which was probably smart. Yeah. You know? You go, well, you guys just go ahead and do that. I'm going to go get some Alabama Steakhouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, so I don't really know like, a lot of what happened. Um, I mean, to me, they were both great. Um, what was the other question? Uh, well, now I'm like, but we, I, I can I can say that by just saying like, how do you feel having seen it from go? Or I did. Ask, oh, that's what I asked. I said, how did you get involved with that? And you said you thought Tony hated you, but um, after you get the role and you go through making this film, obviously you put a lot of work into it as an actor to deliver something really powerful. And I keep using the word powerful because that movie on every level is powerful. If you haven't seen it. Please do. That thing touches on such deep levels of the human condition. It is an unbelievable trip into who we are as people and as a race and just, I don't know, it's one of my favorite films ever made. Um, how did you feel seeing the end product? I imagine you had to have been incredibly proud of that. Um, You're like, no. Well, no, no, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, yeah, I, I tend, like, I'll, I'll watch things pretty much when they're done, you know, give it a, a gloss over. And I, um, I love what I do, man. I love, love acting. And I love the whole part of being on set and, and, and doing that. Um, the, the, it never turns out exactly how you thought it was, you know? <laughs> like, you see yourself completely different from the inside than you do on the outside. And uh, so that's always, that's always a trip for me. But, um, you know, when we were shooting it, um, yeah, I mean, like, a lot of the dialogue and all, a lot of the scenes we were doing, it was pretty heavy. It was like, you know, we're like, uh, there are times where I was sort of like, oh, God, is this going to be okay? <laughs> like, I mean, like, what, are we, uh, what are we doing here? Some rough dialogue. Yeah, it's yeah. very rough, you know, and it's, it's you know, it, it, uh, yeah, I mean, people were actually, I mean, I was warned by the producers not to go see the movie because, you know, before it came out, because, like, you know, we might get shot or something. I, I remember know. that was, like, a thing people were saying at screenings. I remember the, the Fallbrook Mall and Burbank, Thousand Oaks, like, they'd had warnings about, like, please be careful about going to opening night of this film because there was, like, a thing on the news about it because I guess people were threatening, which I don't, I, I get it because it, it deals in race and everything, but I don't get why you would want to cause more violence toward a movie that's about why it's stupid to commit that kind of violence. Yeah, the whole thing is about Danny's arc and realizing why this is all wrong after his brother illustrates everything to him and Danny pays the price for it. Spoiler alert, I didn't say anything. If you didn't say anything. Um, because it's a movie that has so many deep layers and like you said, really uncomfortable scenes and uncomfortable dialogue, um, was there something in particular in that film during the process of making it that was really hard for you to go through as an actor? Um, no, no, yeah. no, dude, like, uh, you know, <laughs> cause I am a racist. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no it's <laughs> totally, I totally agree with everything. Oh my God. Um, so, <laughs> Well, I, I, get, well, I was going to say don't quote Welcome to that, Days of the Dead, <laughs> Where there are no fucks given and we will make jokes. They're all... Yeah, Go ahead. Jokes, jokes. Um, no, actually... Uh, you know what? Like, uh, I'm not really like a method actor or anything like that. You know, it's, I never have been, so... 
Um, acting wise, it was sort of easy to sort of shed the skin and you know not really feel that way or be work. that deeply into it. But um, you know, I would say because that that thing was such a heavy duty film, you know, like um, Tony K helped a lot actually because. It was rare that we ever had to like break character really because like he shot the whole movie without any lighting. Like literally, he shot the whole movie without any light. Just all natural light. All natural light, just carrying this uh, you know, camera around on his shoulder and uh, just did take after take. I mean, I don't, I mean, he, he broke like a record for how much film he shot on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was cool. It was cool to just kind of keep going. I mean, if I had that kind of plethora of actors on my set, including fucking Elliot Gould, for God's sake, yeah, you know, Elliot, be, cool. I'd be like, just roll as much film as we possibly can. We'll put it together. Um, I know that. Uh, let me check how uh, we're doing on time. We're good. We're doing real good. Um, the last thing I want to ask about American History X before I move on to the audience like is, to, uh, how was it working with Tony as a director? <laughs> like, give me. Give me something about a direction that he gave you or the way that you, you viewed him as a filmmaker amongst all the other ones that you've worked with over time. Because he is a different voice, for sure. Yeah, like I said, he's extremely talented. Um, he is one of those directors which I really like. Um, I think he cast it knowing pretty much that he kind of casted it right, if you know what I mean. Um, he rarely gave us direction, you know, at, in terms of acting. Um, he pretty much, he tended to let the cameras roll a little longer and kind of see what happens. He was really into the perfect, uh, improvisation. Um, he, uh, I, 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 I kind of remember him just sort of sitting on the sidelines and kind of nodding his head. And, um, but always feeling at the same time that he was in control and we were safe. So he was a great director. He was really cool. Yeah. I love hearing that. Well, we're all here because we're all nerds. We all have fandoms. We're all fans of Edward. So I imagine that we all... I might have a question. Maybe not all of us, but if someone does, please raise your hand. Yes, sir, you look back. What's your favorite overall moment of Detroit Rock City? What's your favorite overall moment of Detroit Rock City? Favorite overall moment. Um, okay. Um, so, Zelda 64 just come out. Oh shit, Ocarina of Time? Ocarina of Time, so yeah. Good. Ocarina Sorry. of Time, yeah. Ocarina of Time came out and me and Jimmy spent every night after work for hours. <laughs> you know, like, we'd show up to the set tired, hungover from playing Ocarina of Time and I remember we were just hooked on that game and it's yeah, good memories. Uh, yeah. I love that. What's your favorite memory from Detroit Rock City? When I was done filming, I went and played Ocarina of Time. <laughs> <laughs> and I would just smoke some pot and chill and it was the best thing. Yeah. I would probably agree with you. Because I fucking love that game. I would spend hours playing Ocarina of Time and just go to the fishing level just to hear the music and be like, man, it's so calming, it's so cool. Yeah. But, but enough about me and Ocarina of Time. Does anybody else have a question? Yes, you missed. Hi, Tecker is one of my favorite movies. Hell yeah. Oh, yes! No. Oh my god. I love, love John Waters, man. He is dope. Uh, yeah, he, dude, like, um, it, you know, before, before I, like, worked with him, I hadn't really seen too much. I've seen a couple of his things, and I, I've slowly become even more and more of a fan of his as time has gone on, like, female trouble. That's yes! Cool. <laughs> yeah, um, and, uh, dude, he, um, you know what? Like, the thing with it, you would never know it, but, like, on a John Waters movie, it's a very, like, well, 
it feels like it's fit, like he uses the same people over and over again. So you kind of feel like you're walking into somebody's family. It's like yes. there's a lot of camaraderie there. There's a lot of com com camaraderie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, and he had a uh, had an electric chair in the house, which I thought was Whoa. <laughs> fucking hey, yeah. Um, I want one. Um, <laughs> did it work, or is it just a? Problem? It was an old. Actual electric chair. Oh, wow. Shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. would have that. Yeah. yeah. Totally well, welcome, and there's my chair. There's my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, he uh, he's he runs a very tight set, dude. Like he's very he knows exactly what he wants. He's um, and. Uh, yeah, man, it's 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 crazy. It's I mean, he's he's a perfectionist. You know? He seems like he'd be a great leader. Yeah, for sure. he is. Because he he, he's very very well spoken and articulate, and he just I feel that I've never personally seen the man direct. You have, uh, but I imagine that he is very good with his vision and just getting what he wants. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's done quick, and everybody's supposed to expect to be sort of on their game, and you know. But I mean. You know, hanging out with him afterwards, smoking a joint, whatever. You know, <laughs> wow. that sounds like a nice guy. Yeah, Woo. yeah, I love that. Yeah. Does anybody else have a question? You, sir. We'll show some love to a movie film not too far from here, Pet Cemetery Two. Ooh, there you go. Uh, any <laughs> memories of working with Clancy Brown, or just memories fun on that set? Um. And if, see, we gotta remember, like, I'm going back in time to when I'm like 14 years old, so. <laughs> and a lot's happened. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know about you, but I've kind of had yes, a journey. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, uh, there was a. Uh, Just say it. I was in Pet Cemetery too. Nice yeah, I was in Pet Cemetery <laughs> too, man. There's, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are a couple of cute Georgia peaches. <laughs> <laughs> I love that legitimately you've been through so much as an actor and done so many movies that you can't recall it. Like, I yeah. feel like that's actually kind of a cool thing where you're like, I've just done so much that, yeah, we had pizza. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anybody else have a question they'd like to ask? You, sir. What was it like to step back in the role of John Honor for the Terminator 2 3D show? Oh, that's a good thing. T2 3D? Um, that was... That was cool. Um, yeah, we we shot that out in. Uh, um, I think where did we fucking shoot that? <laughs> Joshua Tree or something like that. They had pizza. I know that. <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was it was cool. It was good to be you know um, back on board, like back on the bike with Arnold and uh, you know of course Jim at the helm and all that, and, uh, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of, like, the thing is, man, it's like, um, I base a lot of the movies that I do in terms of the memories and the times, like, on the times that were kind of out, you know, offset, because usually when you're on set, you're focused and you're, you're doing your thing, um, and, uh, you know, especially for like a big kind of special effects sort of driven thing like that, it's it's a lot of work, you know what I mean? There's a lot of time that you're waiting in between. And, um, you know, the finished product looks, you know, insanely glossy, especially with someone like Jim Cameron, but there's so much fucking work that goes into that, you know. Um, Cameron, who wrote the, uh, the universal thing. He he wrote I mean, he wrote this, you know, and he I don't know how he does it. He must play the whole thing out in his head because he knows exactly what he wants, down to everything with like makeup and hair. I mean he, he knows what he wants, you know what I mean? So he's he's like a genius dude, you know? Um and it shows that dude has had more hit movies than most directors could ever even attempt in their careers. Yeah. It's yeah. insane the amount of power that he's put behind his career. Yeah. Anybody else have a question they'd like to ask? You, sir. Giuseppe Andrews, how was that working with him? Oh, Giuseppe. Um, he, uh, 
He's cool. Um, let's see. <laughs> yeah. He, um, unique. He's a unique, unique guy. Yeah, he's very unique. Um, I'll tell you this much, dude. Like, a lot of chicks, duh, Giuseppe. Oh, oh, like, no. everybody, like, all these chicks wanted to get down with him. I'm like, what the hell? What about me? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the T2 kid, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, fuck you, dude. Yeah. Um, no, Giuseppe was cool. He, uh, he would come and hang out with me and Jimmy sometimes and watch us play off arena. <laughs> <laughs> Fond memories, yeah. fun arena of time. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I like Giuseppe. I like the man. He, he, yeah. I've got a quick question, actually, before I go back to the audience. I had this when I was a kid, and now that I'm sitting here with you, it just fucking went in my head, and I was like, oh, shit, you had that. That's fucking weird. Now you're talking to him. I had an action figure of you when I was a kid. I knew it. I came I with knew the it. motorcycle yeah. and everything for Terminator 2. Getting a clap for the fucking Ken and Yeah! Um, I know the same ones I've got one! Right? right? That's so, <laughs> it's oh. insane. And they had yeah. so many weird variants of like Schwarzenegger and Robert Patrick that had nothing to do with what was even on <laughs> yeah. the screen. But it was still cool. It was like, oh, I love these toys. What was it like for you the first time you ever saw an action figure of yourself? I have to imagine, especially as a kid, that that's kind of a trip. Yes. Yeah, there's a definite feeling of like, ah, I've actually made it. I did it. I'm a fucking action figure. <laughs> yes! Like, yeah. Yes! It's awesome. Yeah, I love that. Uh, that's pretty much the best I can put it, dude. Yeah, <laughs> no, I have to imagine. I hope you at least bought one for yourself and <laughs> held on to it. Yeah, you know what? I've, I've, yeah, I've definitely um, had a couple of them, you know. Um, I've had I, I had one in my I've had them in my house, but then they somebody always ends up taking them. Motherfucker. You know I mean? so, yeah, but um, yeah, dude, like it's it's cool, man. It's, it I don't still know. gives me a hard on every time. I, <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't know if you know this, but. It's a be on the subject of these old Terminator toys and everything. I don't know how familiar everybody here is with NECA. Uh, Woo! A, Woo! An amazing company that makes yes. amazing toys. And I don't know if you know this, but that toy of you with the motorcycle is being remade right now, but with updated uh, action figure technology. So you it, just, it just looks fucking amazing. Very much more realistic. They're redoing that entire line of oh old Terminator action figures and they look stunning because they still have the Arnold with like the purple shirt and metal thing that comes out of his arm except oh. they're highly detailed figures now. Awesome. And they've got one of you in that pack with the bike so you should totally get that. Yeah! Yeah. I love that I just pimped out Kenner. I wish or Kenner. <laughs> out Kenner. Kenner. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then just give me free toys. Dude, I it's like, it was it, it's dope. Like um, you know how? F yeah. Uh, <laughs> just gonna say how freaky would that be if like I was like playing with my action figure as a kid? Um, <laughs> I mean, honestly, if you're in that position where you can say I have an action figure, you have every right yeah. to 